welcome to gangrove.net. My name is Wally Sarkisian. So we have today Peter Manukian. He's uh, young, handsome, and uh, very active in Armenia. He was originally from uh, Yerevan, I mean, from Beirut. And so he made yes. Armenia his home. And he's in, um, sometimes he does journalism, sometimes he does some development. So keep himself and his family alive. So, Peter, welcome. Welcome, Wally, and thank you for, ha for having me. So, originally, I wanted to talk to you. Um, what was the difference between Pashinian and Papian? But you sort of hesitant, so I'm not going to get you into that. So, I respect your, uh, your, uh, your request. So, now, uh, this morning, uh, since we can't talk about that, this morning... Uh, Pashinian have uh, threatened the Garabakh people. I don't know if you heard it or not. Uh, it is, here is where he says, uh, some circles forcibly displayed from Garabakh are taking steps that create threat to Armenian security. So what is those Garabakh people doing is threat now to Armenia? I think this is some kind of manipulation. By, by the government, I'm not into their mind, but as a, as part of political analysis, I think that this is not a safe game. It's, it is a very unwise game. Uh, maybe not Pashinyan personally, but some of his media and some of his propagandist uh, entourage are the, maybe, I am under the impression, I don't want to be judged, I want to be very fair and objective, as much as one can be. But I am, and so many are under this impression, that uh, the circle around Pashinyan is the prime minister of Armenia, Nikol Pashinyan, some of his propaganda machine is trying to create this kind of uh, sensible uh, emotions between Yerevanzik and uh, Armenia and Artsakh. That that is uh, that is not acceptable. Artsakh for me is part of Armenia and it is one of the provinces of Armenia. Maybe this has begun from the early 90s when when, when they started this uh, idea that they they represented that it is a naive and uh, innocent that like that uh, let's make Artsakh independent but gradually they created this kind of uh, uh, division between Yerevanzis and Artsakhsis and this phrase is getting uh, every time labeled Artsakhsis this is this is very bad uh, i think this is some kind of attempt to represent Artsakhsis as a threat. His propaganda machine lately made some statements or some of his bloggers or supporters that Artsakhsis, be careful, do not participate in the, in demonstrations against the government. And uh, I think that they try to create this uh, allergy between Artsakhsis and Armenians. This is a very unwise and dangerous political game. I, I want to plead to the Armenian government not to not to allow if it is not a orchestrator I, 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 at least i think they, 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 they are tolerating this do not do not let them play this game and do not represent Artsakhs as a separate entity of the armenians you know you know the same the, let me let me sorry ahead. to to cut you there um when i used to go lots in armenia i interview villagers member of parliament everybody Every time I ask, I said, are you guys going to be able to keep Artsakh or Garabakh? Their always answer was, Ampayman meg Yerevanu Gutang, Artsakh Chengtar. So what happened, this whole thing now turn around, become anti-Artsakh? Let me show you <coughs> just a few videos so that you see what is going on. It's from Armenia here, diaspora, to all the way there. Yes. Um, so I uh, know that's yeah. not. Mikhail Yorovich, highest on image, Azarjan Harabara Givra, Hertagan, Yevus Megan Kam, Garapagian, Galana, Vornai Gugoshi, Garapagian, Mafian, Vornai, uh, Soveda, Osmana, Putinia, Rusastani. Agenturane, I think in Kordzagalutunne, yev boeve ger yet chen gangnir irez nabadagen or ikin amin inchi ishanutyanka. 
եւ եւ ես անցնաբես ոչ վարչապետ փաշինյանի so here this is in armenia this is he speak diaspora armenian he is very anti everybody but but pashinian so it's uh, russia russia right everything now turn to russia all right so this is from diaspora if um, you want my opinion now let me let opinion, me just run all of them let me run yes, all yes, of them make make a after you and georgia որը դա մեր շնամի մեզի ծնես բանա ուզում որ մենք չենք կարատար իրան իրան չալբաջար են ուզում իրենք լաչին են ուզում այսինքն հայաստանը կտրում է ղարաբաղից ղարաբաղը մնում է իրանց բայց մեզ զոհեր ինչի համար ենք տվել ես տղաները իրանց կյանքը ինչի համար են նվեր ես հայրենիքին արցախուն <laughs> 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 So there you go. There is this, those people. There is so why, why would Artsakh hate Armenians? But they created this environment. All of them. There's there before where Artsakh was our child. We have to protect. We need to do. And now Artsakh. I mean, you are in Armenia. Your your foot is on the ground. What is wrong with those people? Okay, well, I see what you are doing. You are very smart. I appreciate and respect this. Uh, I I want to agree and disagree with you. I don't want to be the defense attorney of Arabian. I am not a, a member of Pever of or NDA, but I want to be fair and and give you my testimony. I don't agree with you that Arabian is in harmony with these people. Well, Why? No, but but let's but... let's no, please let me allow me allow me allow me to elaborate. I. I if you want to make a civil debate i love the civil debates but i will i will tell you on the political standpoint uh, what do, what does the nda say and what does the civil contract say i will speak political uh, maybe this 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 words are uh, taken out of context or misinterpreted the nda i am not part of nda i am not a member i don't want to be their defense attorney of arabian but on the political ground the national democratic alliance says that Artsakh is is part of Armenia it doesn't agree on this uh, approach that Artsakh is a separate entity it it considers that Artsakh is a part of Armenian uh, and an Armenian province so there i don't think that that the NDA is part of this campaign as for the other people the civil contract i think that such statements are very dangerous and irresponsible i once uh, i think i suggested that this such actions i'm not sure on arabot that there must be some kind of law so that people get more responsible what they say unfortunately in armenia the the level of freedom is the de- democracy sometimes is mistaken for a chaos sometimes people say things that they are irresponsible and unwise and they break the the fabric of armenia as a nation such statements i even some of the supporters of uh, the prime minister made such statements i think it is time to be punishable by law such such phrases artsakhsi akhber tersich we armenians and you outcomers 
I hear these phrases. We speak Armenian, and you speak, uh, please speak Armenian. They don't say, please speak Eastern Armenian. They say, speak Armenian. There is some kind of racism that is that that is that is fabricated intentionally. As for us, we that come from abroad, I think that some of the powers did not like us coming here because we don't we don't think think the propaganda that worked in Armenia for for decades. We are not uh, under it influenced. So I think that some some made this uh, division so that we we. Do not mingle with the locals. Well, you know politics. As for such a, as for, uh, as for Fabian and he's saying Russian, uh, I do not believe, honestly, I do not believe that uh, the prime minister is anti-Russian. I cannot. You will you, you will disagree, but I will say this. I know people personally who who who, who sworn who sworn by Russia. When I you know when I joined the NDA, some some people from the the diaspora. Uh, radical left. They condemned me. They told me, "You are joining the NDA rallies who march with the Armenian flag." Whoever, whoever, uh, whoever wants to implement the Western policies in Armenia is destroying Armenia. And these same people are now with the Prime Minister. How come? I, how come? How come such people are in in harmony with the Prime Minister? They used to worship Russia. Uh, and now they are a part of Russian team. This is a huge contradiction, and they and they ally with pro-Western pow uh, powers like Hezmalian. Because for me, I do not believe that Pashinyan is anti-Russian. Not one bit. He, he may he may say a lot of things, but but, but personal but practically, all he all he does is Russian policy in Armenia. You may disagree, and I will be glad to hear your opinion. I, I don't know. I don't disagree with nobody. You know, it's just I. <laughs> I just try to put the facts. You know what people say. Sure, sure. You know, like the. You know, I also. I. I don't want to go too much in this Papian stuff. He was always came here. He, I let them talk. All his people. You know, even that. Uh, that cardiologist. Uh, what is his name? Uh, Vahe, uh, Mr. Vahe Kasparian. Yeah, I. I look. In fact. <laughs> He was, when he was here that Vahid, about a year ago, he said, give me, take my word, in two months, Russia will be disappeared from the world. You know, those people make, say stuff without even thinking, without even planning, you know, Russia being there before even Armenia was there. So it's a huge country, has 150 million people. You know, you can, the problem with Armenians, you can create new enemy and create new friend. It doesn't work that way. You have to be friend with everybody. You know, for them is Russia is this, Russia is that. Okay, Russia is good or bad, but don't turn them to your enemy. You already have. So they're turning Russia's enemy, Turkey as a friend. This is the problem. Well, in this Armenia. is a huge discussion. I, don't, I do not believe that the NDA is the one who is turning Russia into Armenia. I want to say my own opinion. I don't want to uh, sound that I am the, uh, that I am representing the NDA official point of view. I want to stress and emphasize: I only have very good relations with the NDA. I am not a party member. Whatever I say, I represent myself. This is the issue with Russia. Uh, the, I don't think that there are powers in Armenia who who seek to be enemies with Russia. The the issue is on the other side. Russia claims to be our ally. Okay, I I will say even more. I don't think that it is even the, the, the Russia's fault animal, the Kremlin. Why? Because there are politicians in Armenia who insist that Russia is our strategic ally. Russia, for three years, I have I have followed the Kremlin statements. Not once they made a statement where they said that we are with the Armenians and we are allies. On the contrary, their statements and actions and words and propaganda and everything uh, is pro azeri So what can the what what can the Armenians do? If the Russians don't want to be our friends, we cannot. We cannot. We cannot be like the teenager who who, who makes one-sided love. Okay, I love this, this this woman. She is very beautiful, and I want her to be my lover. But it is what what I want. But this lover that is doesn't care. So Look, what we should do? Okay. We are not saying that let's be let's be enemies with Russia. What we are saying, NDA and me and so others, that since Russia does not want to be our ally. And it declares this, it is time that we uh, search for new allies. 
There is nothing uh, hostile against Russia in this. We want to be friends. We want to have friends. Since Russia doesn't care to be our friend. So what we, should we do? We have to seek some new allies. You will tell me that this step is very dangerous. I will agree with you. It is super dangerous. When we are leaving the Russian front, it is like someone who is doing an open heart operation. We might die in the process, yes. Or a heart disk operation, we might, we might get paralyzed, yes. Definitely. But if we don't do this, we will surely die. It is very risky and very dangerous to leave the Russian front. But not doing so is much more dangerous. And you will say that we have no guarantee that we will find new allies. I will tell that worry is right. We have no guarantees that the West or any country will help us. Yes, but I have one guarantee that Russia will not help us. This is my point of view. Uh, okay, so, <laughs> so the previous government, as much as you guys hate those those government, as they never ask Russia for help. They win and fight and defended Armenia and Artsakh, war after war. This this criminal regime, like everything, is blaming on Russia. Even uh, NDS, they're blaming Russia. They sign a contract to defend Armenia, not Artsakh. You know, like you guys ask, it was uh, Pashinyan who signed the document said said to Russia, go uh, be a peer, do peace. Peacekeeper are not defending a country. Peacekeeper to uh, make peace between them. Russia even lost six of the soldiers. So, you, you know, Armenians keep blaming Russia. Russia didn't come. Russia didn't help. It's be a bullshit because Russia, it's not. No country came in. Who came defend you? Nobody came. You know, the, the, the French came defend you. The, the Americans come. In fact, Americans supported Pashinyan to to give Artsakh, you know. So, so those this is what I'm saying. Like I was 18 year old, I started business. I yeah. was always very friendly with my competitor. I had lunch, dinner with my competitor. My competitor even gave me business. I did that in back home. I did that in Canada. I did in U.S. You, your competitor, you have to find a language. You know, not to be the enemy. So Russia, with a, we all know Russia has its own interest. It's a superpower. The whole world, you see now, Europe, they're against Russia. But they think they're going to wipe up Russia. They, don't, they can't. They even uh, put the economic embargo at Russia. Russia's economy now is better than most Europeans. So, you know... Uh, th this myth of Armenians that Russia is, the, I agree. Russia had lots of historically lots of, but not only Russia. The Persian did to Armenia, the Turks did to Armenia, the the Mongols did to Armenia. All of those countries, we Armenians don't have a friend. But even during Kocharyan, he was friend with the French. He was the best friend of G uh, Chirag, you know. So the, the, so this Armenian relation with Europe always been, but they didn't go against Russia. You know, like Russia always sold Armenian the most advanced equipment that they have. Like, for example, that Skander. Nobody had that. They didn't sold anybody but Armenia. And they never used it. That was the most <laughs> lethal weapon they could have used, but they didn't use it. So, you know, yeah. don't blame... Don't blame your mistake, your problem. Like, I'm not talking you. I'm talking like Armenia. Yes, yes, your, yes. Don't worry. Your mistake, your problem on other people. You know, it's just like when people, uh, kids, when they come from school, they have bad grade. They always blame the teacher. I never, my children, I never agree with them. When they came home, said, oh, the teacher is not good. That's why I have bad mark. No, you didn't do your homework. So this is the problem of Armenia. They keep blaming other people. You, you okay, can't do great. that. You know, look at okay. you. Look at you. I just asked you before that. You know, you're there. You're trying to do a little bit of uh, journalism. You're trying to make a little bit of development to put food, uh, uh, food on your uh, table for your children. That's how government has to work to try to do their best. 
But blaming other people is not going to work. It's wrong. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, it's okay. Why, why, are, we showing, uh, why are we saying sorry? On the, on the contrary, I am very glad we are making a very civil uh, discussion. I respect you and I respect that because we are able to discuss uh, like uh, mature people. I am sure and positive that you are a sincere patriot. I never, I would never blame you or, 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 or get annoyed because you are expressing your idea and you want the best of Armenia, just, uh, just uh, like me. Uh, and this is what Armenia mi misses because when two people want to discuss, they want they kind to uh, b break each other's head. This is this okay. is very childish. Let me That's just stop you. There. Let me stop yeah. you for one second. That is perfect word. Like me and you, we could uh, talk and we could agree or disagree. But that's it's opinion. Everybody has their own opinion. Exactly. L let me we go, are not. We are. We do not. Let we, me go, not we are not Dalagardzik. Armenian don't have that. That's a lack in the Armenian people. Armenian people is like you either with me or you are against me. They don't have. Okay, let's talk. You know. So you, for example, made clear about NDA. I mean, but that's your opinion. It, I don't have to yeah. agree with you, you know, or you agree with me, you know. So this is Armenian problem is you either with me or you're against me. This, like, for example, I go back one second here about Papian, right? Yeah, yeah. They were here. I invite them always. They talk whatever they want to do. But because I published one letter that was not mine, it was 3 a.m., 3.01, what is it, 3.01 a.m., like... <laughs> they sent. <coughs> they. <coughs> oh yeah, I'm sorry. I'm just coming off the cold. <laughs> it's okay. So I published, and what Papian does? I mean, this is the guy who wants to be a leader. He goes in there. He unfriend me. Is that a leader you call him? Well, I don't want to get into that personal But, stuff but I'm just saying I, you, I it's a weakness. Yeah. Well, because this subject came to what you said, we need to d discuss, we need to talk, but not, yeah, I know, if you say something today, I didn't like it, I go there and, and uh, uh, block you, that's not uh, uh, what you call a reasonable person, because a reasonable person will negotiate, will talk. Here, here yeah, they... Yeah. They could have come in uh, my show. They could say, well, it's wrong and blah, blah, you know, because basically that article was saying why those NDA or Bever, whatever you call them, they hired Turkish lobbyists to lobby for them. It's a legitimate question. There's nothing with it. But come and defend yourself. Give a reason why you did that. Don't just go block people or blackmail people. That's not how you run politics. That's not how you run organization. That is my what I'm saying. Whether they're good, bad, whatever their attention is, you don't block people. Let them unless people like use. I only uh, block people when they use profanity. Yeah. But if they have the proof there, I many times I ask uh, Pashinian people, come here, come debate, come defend Pashinian, make your opinion. But they don't. And that's the only time I, I blocked at least uh, 1,500 people <laughs> because they were using profanity. They never wanted to come and talk. Sure. You know. So go ahead. Anyway, what is what is beautiful about this? Uh, the, uh... Debate. It's not a debate. It's a dialogue between us that we we don't want to say treason, treason, in, in, uh, or or I want to I want to say that you are a traitor because we are both sincere patriots. I am sure that you are, and I am sure that you are definitely think the same of me. As for uh, as for uh, the Russians only defending Artsakh, but I want to remind you, Wally, that not only Artsakh, uh, they, they they now uh, they now the Azeris occupy parts of Armenia that is. We consider so sovereign and internationally recognized. Neither the CSTO, neither the Russians interfere. They will not interfere. Uh, they, we had a clear agreement that the Russian peacekeepers will defend the inhabited populations, uh, population in Artsakh. But uh, but also the prime minister also has his large guilt of this because when he uh, when he uh, admitted uh, when he declared that Artsakh is part of Azerbaijan, exactly. so the Russians uh, the Russians had the the excuse. Do not interfere. So I think that this is a joint mistake 
uh, joint seen by both our government and the Russian and the Kremlin. Uh, as for the Russian war, uh, I want to be very realistic. I do not believe that uh, the West wanted to bring Russia to its knees. I think that the West got what it wanted. I think that to, the West wanted to exhaust Russia so it cannot interfere anymore outside the, outside this border. For example, the Russians the Russians went to Syria and they and they helped Assad keep in power, which failed the Western plan. Okay, uh, I think that today the Russians have diminished. They, they they have too much casual casualties. I do not think that they have any more power to interfere outside their borders, and I doubt that they, they can even. But, but you know, Armenia. but you know, Russian. It, it is, look, look. I live in the United States. Okay. Russian, yes. how many countries Russian win and conquered, you know? It's only as Americans going in there and ru ruining countries like Iraq, Syria, L Libya, Lebanon, everywhere, you know? No, so let's, blaming let's be realistic because, because the Soviet Union, when, when, when the Russians were so much powerful they, they, and there was a Soviet Union, right. they we're occupied, yeah, occupied that... half of Europe. It's not, a it's not a question of sincerity or, or morality here. They do not have the power anymore. But, no, but... Uh, the Soviet Union, yes, Every, they, yeah. everybody was afraid. Everybody was afraid of communism. But Soviet Union went. Russia become like a democratic country, like others. I, yeah. I doubt this, but, but I don't want to. I don't want, want to interfere in their internal affairs. But I personally doubt that Russia is a democratic country. But this is not my right to discuss because this is the matter of Russia. I don't want to go there. Okay, so the, that's different uh, subject, and uh, everybody yeah. has their opinion in that. Who is democratic? Who is not? I, I personally don't think even Armenia is democratic, but that's my opinion, you know. Democratic country, you don't take journalists, throw them in jail, you know. So tell me about those two journalists. What happened to them? What did they say so they took them, throw them in jail? I do not know exactly what happened, but I want to say this. Democracy is, is the, first of all, a matter of environment and atmosphere and the, the, the mental, psychological state. I don't know how much Armenia is democratic or not, but I want to say this, there is still no democratic atmosphere. Democracy is above all atmosphere. People must feel confident to involve and engage. Even now today, whenever we see a journalist or a reporter or camera wants to ask someone of his opinion, 90% of Armenian locals want to avoid and move away. They are afraid, they are not comfortable. So there is a huge issue. Armenians who, 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 who I get asked, a political question, their first feel is maybe I speak something and I will get fired of my job. So there is a matter of comfort that this government could not provide. How much is it democratic? I don't know for sure. Maybe it is more democratic and tolerant than the others. But the, but the, but the mental state has not changed. And this is a huge issue. You see, above this, many, so many of Pashinyan supporters are very aggressive. This is yet another matter. People, people speak, are afraid to speak because pa, pa, some of Pashinyan's uh, uh, popular space is very aggressive. And the prime minister doesn't do anything. The government must do everything to make everybody comfortable. If it wants to appear as a democratic uh, country, first of all, it must develop the status. When we have so much uh, uh, political leaders in prison, I'm not here to discuss how much legal and right it is. But there are there is a matter of national uh, issue here. Even if they made technically some mistakes, okay, I think that the government must must bring all of these people out of the prison. Because when we see that op opposition people like Arshotian and like uh, Varjana Venetian are in prison, regardless if if they are technically in guilty or innocent, this is not the issue. These people must get out and get involved in the political life. This will make the Armenian people more comfortable and more tolerant. Armenia has many wounds. The, the society is divided. There is antagonism and distrust and hatred and extremism. Uh, there is no tolerance. In such an environment, it is not logical for the Armenian uh, government to not interfere. You, you, you will tell me that uh, supposedly the government does not interfere in the legal stuff. Okay, I would agree. But how many... Even Prime Minister Pashinyan said that the leaders of Sas Nazarir are patriotic people when he was in opposition. Yeah. How many deputies of the civil contract came and stood by these people? You know, I think that in such status, 
Whenever there are such people, I think that even the Republican Party and the NDA and the IRF and all of them must unite and stay together and make a symbolic I, sta sta state. I, I, uh, when Papian was here, I have uh, videos I could even show. I asked him, I said, you know, you all know the problem is Pashinyan. You know that all other political, why don't you go join, uh, talk to Kocharian, talk to Sarkisian, talk to other form, get rid of the government, then run, you run for your party, whatever. Or he said, they're all criminal, they're worse than Pashinyan. So how are you going to talk to them? Everybody hate everybody. If those people don't unite with each other, how are they going to get rid of Pashinyan? Impossible, I guarantee you. The, the way it right now is, Pashinyan will be there next 30 years. I okay, guarantee. I will answer you, and, and most of the people will not like my answers, but I will divide them in sections. I asked Mr. Babian personally, how far does the NDA is ready, prepared to go to unite with the opposition? He gave me a logical answer. He said that we have no uh, vetoes here, but there is some, there is this principle that every part of the opposition must agree on the declaration of independence. This is one red line, second like that, that I agree with him. What he says is logical. There, second, there is another issue. And now I am expressing my own opinions. I don't want to appear that I am representing anybody. What I say represents Bedros Manukian only. Okay? There is a second issue here. I, I agree with you that the Republican Party and the Armenian Alliance and Kocharian uh, than ARF, they have their presence on the ground. I agree with you, and we cannot ignore their presence. This is this will not be realistic. Yes. But this, there is this, this issue. P most of the people, when they hear the word Kocharian or Serge Sarkisian, the presidents, with respect to their position, they, 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 get, uh, they get repulsed. They don't like to hear these uh, yeah, names. Right. I think what Mr. Sefilian suggested is very realistic. I said that such leaders must move away from the arena. Okay, not all, not all the people of the Republican and Armenian Islands are uh, corrupt. There are, there are good people there. Why don't you push forward such more acceptable figures and make way for this uh, unification? I personally, I am expressing my own opinion, and some will get upset by this. I think that what you're saying has much truth. I think that the opposition must unite, regardless of their uh, differences in foreign policies yeah. or stuff. That's the only solution. But, uh, but yes, that but, is uh, the only but solution. Do not only blame, do not only blame the NDA for this. The other, the other parties must all, all, also make steps. And you know, the NDA made many initiatives. Hamachampum, okay? He made his Hamachampum and went to opera and he take, took, take, took down the NDA flags and he went, went there with the Armenian flag of Yadakun of the Republic of, of Armenia. Nobody joined. So this is, the, maybe this is a two-step pro, uh, process. It takes two to tango. I think the NDA made many efforts and many initiatives, but nobody on the other side responded. Uh, responded so why only blame the nda but to be very very uh, objective and fair yes i think that all the opposition must unite and put aside their differences now and concentrate on serving the country i as only bedros manukian i agree with you there and this is on my own stance i don't want to appear that i'm representing anybody else i everyone came here from uh... Uh, what is that, Marukian, uh, Edmund Marukian, uh, yeah. uh, lots of people, you know, like I interviewed, they came here. All of them, I said to them, you must unite. Doesn't matter how bad they are. You don't, you're you not going on war with them. You basically unite, say, we need to remove this criminal from power. That's it. And then you you make an election, you your party, and go fight or for election, but you cannot just hate each other, expect Pashinyan goes away. Because this, now you, a few minutes ago, you said everybody, when you say Kocharian, Sarkisian, they, because they blackmailed them. Uh, for 30, at least from since 2008, they've been blackmailing them. They are corrupt, they are this. And now let me ask you this question. This revengeful Pashinyan, if he had little, this much things on Kocharian and Sarkisian or this corruption, you think he would not throw them all in jail? But he can't prove it. 
This is the problem because everybody come here and they say, oh, they are corrupt. Okay, show me. Why don't you show me corruption? I could tomorrow excuse Bedros. I say Bedros is corruption. Don't I have to prove something? Yes. But nobody, neither Bever, neither anyone could prove that Kochari and Sarkisian are corruption. Yes, they enrich themselves. Every every politicians, look at in America, they're all multimillionaire, the politicians. They enrich themselves. But do they defend the country? Yes. That is the important thing is. They defended Artsakh, they defended entire that area. So when people come here and talk about, oh, they're corrupt, you're supporting this, you're support it's, it's BS. Prove to me. And so this is Well, I agree with you. I agree with you that yes, you, when you write, you're right. I agree with you that uh, despite my my huge uh, disagreements or uh, criticism of the former governments, I want to be fair and objective. Yes, in the eras of Kocharian and uh, Ser Sarkisian, we defended our lands. In the area of Pashinyanism, we lost everything. Yes, there is no question there. When you're right, you're right. Perish, that's the end <laughs> of the question. That's the end of the question. So Pashinyan destroyed it. They were at least built it liberated Artsakh, we were all feeling happy, we were all have this moral things that we could do, all Armenians, and now everybody is demoralized, nobody can do anything. So no this, question that I agree with you. So this hatred of, I, I'm, you know, I never uh, had the chance to interview neither Kucharian nor neither Sarkis, and I wish I did, but I did interview Pashina, I did, his wife invited me to government office, I went there, I talked to them, you know, that's how I knew Pashina was scam, you know, scam artist. First time I talked to him, I knew uh, he was scam artist. And that's why I could have been, I had Pashinian phone number, I had uh, Anna Agopian phone number, their secretaries, I could call, you know. I could have been friends with them, like uh, all those journalists, and I could now care, took the phone and called Pashinian, hey Pashinian, I want to talk to you. But I didn't do that. Because a journalist, you should never conspire with the government because the government by itself is corrupt. I don't care what government you do because they have power. So journalists must never conspire with the government. They do, then they are complicit. And those like there is what? Maybe there are 10 media, they're all conspiring with them. This is the problem of every country. Like even in the United States, you have... Uh, many, many of those uh, mainstream media, they are one-sided. So this would is you the allow me to, Yes, would you allow me to make some sort of uh, statement that maybe it will sound like a public reclam for the Arab Amian, but I think I, I'm sure that you agree with me that uh, practicing media blockade on any, any party is a moral and national crime. Uh, yesterday, the Speaker of the House, Mr. Alain Simonia, uh, to, uh, Made this uh, made this uh, call, this plea that if anyone can prove that these lands, the, the four villages are uh, Armenian, Mr. Arababian has in all, has his uh, very serious studies. I don't know what are they, but the guy, uh, regardless of what he he represents, is wrong or right. The guy made a very logical and uh, it's a, a log logical request. He said that since you since you are looking for some kind of demonstration and proof. I have those documents. Uh, let uh, let the public uh, TV station host me, and I will represent my help. Uh, do you agree that uh, depriving someone from his uh, ability to express is a very bad moral crime? This this is a very bad situation in Armenia. The the mass media is monopolized. The Pever is fighting only with his modest uh, media. And some small time bloggers, modest bloggers like me, uh, I think it is time for the media uh, to to allow everyone to allow everyone to express his will. Maybe the opposition, maybe the opposition makes some sort of good initiative towards the NDA and the Arab Union. They have much more larger media, TV stations, and YouTube channels. Why don't they make this initiative? Since what he's saying is not uh, is not headed towards any uh, internal party in Armenia. Let I, I call upon, uh, please allow me, the media to to assist Mr. Babian 
if the Armenian uh, public TV station and uh, the pro-government stations will not uh, host Mr. Babian, let them host him. This will be a very good shot and initiative and build uh, trust. What do you say? Your opinion? Well, I, I don't know, because Papian have made such a so much a statement, you know, like, uh, like, you know, like a politician of people, integrity is very important, you know. But when you uh, start attacking here, attacking there, uh, making this things... This is not an issue here. Today we are facing a national crisis and it, it's not the time for such uh, wounds, whatever the case is. You know, I, I I have no control over the <laughs> Armenian media, what they do, what they don't do. But but I know the was media. important if you okay, call me, and call upon. Let me tell you this. What is the definition of dictatorship? Do you know what is the definition? Please tell me. Educate me. When you have a political party, they will never stand up to their leader. You know, like, for example, all these things Pashinian did, not a single person from Pashinian party who stood up or resigned. So that means it's a dictatorship. That is the definition of dictatorship. And then you have your media are afraid. They're, they're just replicating what you're saying. They're just replicating to the public. So this is dictatorship. And so this is the problem. All the, Arme all the, all the Armenian political parties, whether inside the diaspora or in the Armenia, I think most of them, the absolute majority, is is a one, one uh, is run by one, one one man show. This is everywhere. Well, I think. Like, even okay, so Tashnak, the Republican Party, the Republican <clears throat> Party, is it not? Is it not the factor run by Donald Trump? who is the strongest person in the, the Republican Party. Yeah, who but how dare to oppose Donald Trump? They will no, make no, him no, a traitor no, and no, a communist. No, Repub <laughs> Republican Party. In fact, the reason Biden got him elected is because the Republican Party ran against Trump. So they in America, like they they people like for example, right now the third party Kennedy and that lady now vice president, right? They were all Democrat. They got yeah. out. Now they're running against them and they're getting very popular, you know. And so, so that's a democracy. But in Armenia, you have a one single party. Nobody. I just want to like for example, Alan Simonia, right? He would uh, resign, says, you know, I disagree with Pashinyan. Nobody. It's a dictatorship. That is the definition of dictatorship. When people are not free to speak, the party, not, not the people, the party that you're governing. So like, for example, Tashnak. Tashnak are not uh, ruled by one person, right? It's a... It's a collective thing they elect within themselves and things. Even though they are now in disarray, they are in big trouble, you know. So, but I'm I'm making. But I think that, but I, but I think that Mr. Rahman Markarian runs the show. This is my own opinion. <laughs> not even not even the the current I am, leader. I think that Mr. Rahman Markarian is the strong man. I am. I, I am have the right to interfere with the ALF, but I think that's the case. I am making a video soon how IRF, AGBU, silent war, how they, this whole things, it came from that. But that, you have to wait and see the video. Very good. I want to, I want to also ask you a question since you are in the US, USA. Why is it that only some, some fine gentlemen, patriots such, such as yourself, Mr. Haruk Sasunyan, who is your friend, and he's he, he is like my godfather. I want to salute Mr. Haruk Sasunyan. He, he he has been like a like a rock upon my shoulder. He is my godfather politically in the diaspora, and the Armenian Catholicos of Gidigia, His Holiness uh, Aram, Aram Catholicos, and uh, many of you like Mr. Bedros Haja maybe uh, are only raising the voice. The Armenian Re Revolutionary Federation, the RF, the Tashnak Party is supposed to be. Uh, opposition. They say they are opposition and I welcome them. I'm not a Tashnak. I am Hanchakian by ideology. Uh, but uh, but the IRF say that they are opposition and this is very good. But they are not making anything. I, I would have thought that the diaspora would, would, would tremble the ground at Pashinian steps. Why are they silent? Why why is it that only you, Mr. Sasunian, Mr. Bedro Sargent and the Catholicos, as an institution, only the Catholicos is making sound. 
but no other institution. They're all afraid. Do you know my message, my uh, Facebook message, how many every day I got? Hundreds of messages. They're afraid to, to even like something. People are afraid. Pashina and have uh, lots of people in diaspora. They have uh, families there. They have home in there. They have apartment in there. They have businesses in there. Their personal interest above the national interest. And so they, I, I you know, like... If you go back, look some of my videos, I used to get 30,000, 40,000 viewers. Now I'm lucky if I get 10, 20, because they're all afraid. That is the yeah. problem. They all, uh, so, so what do you do? What can you do? Because unless you remove Pashinian and so bring democracy, so people would be again free to talk and do. Otherwise, uh, Armenia will go more and more and more silent. They're afraid. I have, there is a guy every single day, he sent me like videos. Oh, look what Pashina. I say, he's from in New Zealand. And I said, look, you're sending me all this. What am I supposed to do with it? Why don't you come <laughs> in my show and tell the story? Well, no, it's my family, my this, my that, you know. So this is the problem. Pashin, unless yeah. Pashina has been removed, so the people will be able to speak out. And uh, so that's why don't that's, you someday come visit us in Armenia? Huh? Sorry? Why don't you come and visit us in Armenia someday? I can't, but Allah Pajina will throw me in jail. <laughs> you are exaggerating. It's not I'm not exaggerating. I'm not exaggerating. It. Those uh, I created lots of enemies, you know, which is I don't care. I see. Yeah. I see, I see. I used to go like every year twice in Armenia. Every year. But since then, I don't go because I'm controversial. I ask questions. Uh, um, I'm going to show you one thing after we finish because I don't want to do it in public so that you could see. OK. All right. So do you have uh, do you have anything else to say? Because we've been for well, a while. Yes, I just want to thank you for this opportunity. Actually, uh, I, have, I have maybe you read on Facebook. I have taken the decision to take a small break on politics because uh, it is very it is uh, very polluted in, in here uh, i want to say that uh, even i uh, i don't want to say that i'm disgusted uh, or bored but it is something between this this is why uh, thank you for having me i made an exception uh, I, because i looked forward to speaking with you but if uh, anyone who is following me sees me not talking politics for one or two months uh, please understand, I need to take a break. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Well, uh, <clears throat> Bedros, thank you for coming. I appreciate it. You take care. All the best to you and your family. Stay safe. Hopefully, uh, we don't want to hear that you've been in jail. So. <laughs> thank you for having me. And please pass, pass my regards to Mr. Sassunian, Mr. Bedros-Aljan, and all the patrons in the USA. Thank you very much. Okay. It, it has been a pleasure. Okay, stay there for a minute.